really planning on uh, filming today, but then when we got here, it was uh, so dramatically different from just like a week ago, and so I decided uh, to make another vlog just to document the state. Plus, there are some exciting things happening today, so I want to just like do a little update. So I'm gonna be doing some data collection. So I have um, gotten two of these XTech temperature data logger. Wait, the cap isn't on. Uh, and I got two because I want to have one inside the greenhouse and one outside the greenhouse so that I can compare the temperatures. And so what this does is, as you can see, it has this USB thing. Uh, so it likes the temperature, uh, stores it in this thing, and then you can plug it into your computer and download the data. So I've set it to a uh, one hour interval, uh, so it'll take one measurement per hour. And uh, like I said, I'll have one inside the greenhouse and one outside the greenhouse. Okay, so, uh, so these loggers aren't supposed to be uh, outside, they're meant for like in uh, logging temperatures in like warehouses and stuff. Uh, if you're storing something that needs to be monitored, uh, the temperature needs to be monitored. So um, they can't guarantee that they'll take the humidity, especially of the greenhouse or just like of outdoor conditions. Um, so the one that's going to be outside. I'll put in the shed because that should give kind of a realistic uh, estimate of the temperature. It won't be perfect anyway, but I'm just gonna have to work with with this. In addition to the two data loggers, I also got two cheap uh, thermometers uh, because these don't actually show the temperature, so you don't see the temperature until you download the data. So. Uh, just like super th simple thermometers, and as you can see, it is now 10, like 14 degrees inside the greenhouse, and outside, this is the outside thermometer, let's see, it is 10 degrees. It's not such a big difference right now, but, that, but it's uh, still early in the day and the sun hasn't really been shining on the greenhouse. Yet. And 14 degrees is quite good, like, if it can keep that temperature kind of stable. We also noticed when we came here this morning that it was uh, quite warm in the greenhouse. Okay, so I want to do uh, just a standard garden tour, and then I'll put up these uh, temperature loggers. And... Uh, Maybe do some gardening? So this thermometer it says inside on, which means inside the greenhouse. And so I'll try to put that here. So this, that way is south. And so I think this will be like pretty protected against the sun. Let's see, does this work? There. Should. So I realized that I haven't uh, shown this frame before, um, because I, last year the last uh, fly I did was in June, uh, and this was made later in June. So, uh, so this is a uh, frame for all my perennial flowers and so it has uh, some stuff plants that I bought um, and some plants that I've sown myself from seed uh, and um, I'm very excited to see how they have survived over the winter and as soon as they start showing some life I'll do a more thorough uh, tour of it like you can see it still has this layer of ice on it, so everything isn't out yet, but I've been pretty careful marking everything. I have these yellow labels, 
uh, but they're in Norwegian, so I'm gonna have to research some of the English names for these plants as well. At least this one I know, this is the hollyhocks. I think I have a few of them spread out uh, in this bed, and this is the only one that's thawed yet. And this one I also know, it's a white uh, dandelion. I'm excited to see if that survived. You would think that dandelion wasn't too hard to grow, but I have both white and pink dandelion. And this I think also based on the Latin name, I think I remember it's Achillea. Is, could that be? It looks like uh, the wild one is more well known. Maybe it's like white. This is a pink variety. I also have a an orange variety and uh, more of a, it's, the label is kind of frozen so I can't show any more, but this is more of a yellow with pink in the edges. I'm looking forward to show that more in detail and hopefully, I haven't thought about like the composition at all, I've just put lots of random plants together that I thought looked nice individually, so I'm just assuming they look nice together as well. So we'll see how that goes. And then we have this fr frame here at the front of the cabin. So here, uh, this is more like um, perennial edible stuff. Uh, this one is purely non-edible. Um, so here I have in the back, there are some perennial allium plants. Um, one of them is looking very nice. Uh, but it's, this is like growth from last fall. And then there is some uh, asparagus in the middle, and in between the asparagus I have chives. So I see there's one cluster right here that's looking really nice. There's some new growth there, so I'm sure that'll explode. And there's some chives under the rock too. Uh, and then in the front there is some um, wild strawberries. Um, and the reason I have this fence on top is because we have some badgers that have been digging uh, and disturbing the plants. So, so most of this is already set since it's uh, perennial stuff, but there is some space in the back for some annual flowers. Last year I had calendulas and I th really like that, I thought they looked super nice. So we'll see uh, what I plant there this year. Okay, so now we're looking to the now we're looking at these main beds parallel to the greenhouse. They're mostly under the snow, uh, but I wanted to show this. This just melted out from the snow, so these are not random sticks. These are the Jerusalem artichokes. Uh, so in in the fall, I cut them down to I don't know like. 30 or 40 centimeters, and then I leave them as markers so that in the spring I'll be able to find the, when the snow thaws, I'll be able to find the Jerusalem artichokes under the snow, under the dirt, I mean. So I'm super looking forward to this snow melting so that I can harvest them and then plant them. But that may still be a while until that happens, unless I do something about it, which is what I've done over here. So here, a week ago, I dug a hole and then I put some ashes from the uh, wood-burning stove inside here and uh, I couldn't even see the ground when I did that uh, but now it's melted really nicely and there's quite a large hole here so I think I'll do the same here and here as well so to just make the melting happen a bit faster and it's interesting that it's this middle part where I have actually my main beds, that's where uh, it really hasn't thawed, like they're still... You can see here how deep it is, like 40 centimeters of snow, and even more where we've shoveled snow from the paths. So I can't wait for that to melt, because the rest of the area here has melted very nicely. And then in the area uh, here, and the slope up there, I have lots of these like, I think they're called like botanical tulips um, that I planted uh, two years ago, and so they came up last spring, and last spring they actually came growing through the snow, but this year I haven't seen a single one of them yet, so I hope they survived the winter.
So we'll see. This is from the greenhouse. And then there's also a bed, a big one, a big bed here under the snow, but I, I don't see any traces of that. And then that doesn't matter so much. Uh, there's no hurry. And then here you can just barely see this frame. So this has some strawberries in it uh, and, a, and lots of weeds. So this will be kind of like my buffer bed. I'll dig it. I'll uh, take care of the strawberries, of course, but then I'll, I'll have to do something with the weeds. And um, yeah, and there are these frames here too. I'll be removing them um, because I don't like the way they kind of block the path here. Um, so I think it's better to just have grass right there. And then there, I've emptied most of the important plants out into this frame and like other places. But there's still some strawberries, wild strawberries mostly, and some. Uh, there's this one mint plant that has really beautiful flowers. So I want to uh, take care of those. So I'll probably put this, maybe everything, the strawberries and the mint plant flower, in this place here. And then over here, there's the herb bed, and that's looking very nice. And there is, this is some oregano that's looking really green. And then in the greenhouse, things are, things are uh, slowly growing. The spinach is getting its second pair of leaves. So that looks very nice. And at this stage, last year it was being eaten by mice, but this year they've let it be. So I think. We have a pact. We're friends. I don't bother them. They don't bother my spinach. And this is broccoli. And then in the middle there's some dill. And I don't think it'll show up on video, but the dill has just started growing as well. Over here, the peas have just started growing. And I've moved a lot of the flowers down here because I think it's just warmer than up in hanging in there, sort of, on the shelf. I think the ground stores so much heat that they'll grow better here, but there aren't, these aren't really sprouting, sprouting yet. And ironically, on the shelf, the cornflower is doing good, but the, apart from that, stuff isn't growing so much. These are some broad beans I sowed and some um, lamb's lettuce. And I've also sowed some more stuff here. And some flowers. The tulips look great. Spinach here. I thought this might not make it, but this looks amazing. And the same with this. And this is more of the lamb's lettuce, but this is actually growing. Let's see. I don't know if you can see it, because I'm not seeing the screen now. So that's looking great. And this is some Mizuna cabbage, also looking great. And this Akalija, which is actually one that I rescued from here. It was growing here when we bought it. It's doing really great. There's some new growth. And then this is a, an Akalija that I sowed from seed. Here's some hollyhocks. Not looking great, but that's okay. I've planted the most important stuff outside. And here's the lower garden. So the pond is looking super nice. And there are at least two frogs or possibly toads, or maybe a frog and a toad, um, there, and here's the rest. So let's first look if we can see the, if we can see one of these guys. Oh, there he is. There he is.
So, can you see him right there? You think you can see him? And there was definitely a white one, like, or not a white, but there was a very light colored frog. So, I'll put, I filmed that with my phone, so I'll put the footage here. So that's the local wildlife. Then over here, uh, this is a, a kind of perennial allium thing um, that I can't remember the name of. Uh, in the region, it's Ramslök, which means ram's onion. Uh, but uh, and I feel like I've heard a similar thing. Maybe it's just called wild garlic or something. So I planted a plant of that here, and uh, and then I put this ring around just to mark that that's where it is. And then there's some rhubarb in here, but it's still under the snow. But here is some rhubarb that has come out. So that's very nice. Such a pretty color. And then in here, these are just empty. I'm going to... Uh, so what I'm thinking is I'll put them wherever it makes sense. Then one of them I'll fill with some rhubarb and the other I'll fill with lots of delphiniums because the ones I had in the over here grew really nicely. And I think, I think what would work really well for this place is to have like some clearly defined like bubbles. So these, these frames where I have like some pretty plants and flowers and then I just leave the rest as it is because I think like the wildlife is really nice and I just like the way it looks here uh, as soon as I get that sorted out. So in this area I have lots of rhubarb that I planted from seed so they're all baby baby plants but, uh, but hopefully it should be coming up strong this year. We'll see. I should probably fertilize this rhubarb now, so I'll do that later today. So that's all I wanted to share from the garden in April. I'm going to be sowing some sunflowers later today, and maybe some straw flowers and nasturtiums as well. Um, and then I'm looking forward to the next update to see how how the snow is melted. Yeah, and I'll be digging some more holes in the snow. So, thank you for joining this garden tour today.